Eminemus ruled for 16 years from the second book of Manetho. The 12th dynasty consisted of seven kings of the Espals. His son Croesus, son of Amanemus, for 46 years. Amanemus for 38 years. Thesastrus for 48 years. Lacaris for 8 years. Amerus for 8 years. Amanemus for 8 years. Schemiophrosis, his sister, for four years. Total, 160 years. 13th dynasty consisted of 60 kings of the Espals who reigned for 453 years. I'm the Brick Builder of History and Chess, and in this video, I will be going over the enigmatic 13th Dynasty and their family tree. But to cover the 13th Dynasty, we have to cover the 12th. And we start in the middle of the dynasty with Senusret III, otherwise known as Sesostris, who, according to Minitho, conquered e Europe. He defeated Egypt's enemies and expanded their borders to a size which would not be reached until the time of Thutmose III in the 15th century. His son, as we can see, was Amenemhat III. And according to Oppenheim ruled from 1859 to 1813 BC. And he was the last great king of the Middle Kingdom. He was succeeded by Amenemhat IV. And I know I have said very little about Amenemhat III and Senusret the third, but I will talk about them more when I make a fully fledged 12th dynasty family tree. And Amenemhat the fourth ruled for almost 10 years, as we can see here, 1815 to 1806, approximately. And uh, not too many Egyptologists, but there certainly minority say that Amenemhat IV's reign was a, a, a co-regency with Amenemhat III. And the relation is even uncertain. What I mean is Amenemhat IV could be the grandson of Amenemhat III. He could be the biological son of Amenemhat III, or he could be the stepson of Amenemhat III. Or, as Egyptologist Toby Wilkinson stated, an older, or at least just as old, relative. And therefore, Amenemhat IV in general is a very enigmatic pharaoh, and he didn't do too much. And he died childless because he was succeeded by his half-sister, who could have been his wife, Sobek Nefru. However, Kim Reihold, who wrote the book, who wrote a magnificent book about Egypt during the Second Intermediate Period, which most Egyptologists currently follow, and it has replaced the Von Berkerath's chronology, 
so Vegnecro did not marry Amenemhat IV, but instead a normal man, or at least commoner, or maybe even a, a noble person, or, or no more, it's unclear, named Amenemhat, but not a pharaoh. And if Amenemhat IV really did have children, or if Sobek Nefru had children, wouldn't Amenemhat IV instantly let these children of Sobek Nefru, doesn't matter if it's his children or if it's Sobek Nefru's children, it's just her children, wouldn't he let them succeed him instantly instead of Sobek Nefru? Well, I have a theory here that Amenemhat IV might have even been a stepson of Amenemhat, because it's unclear if Hetsepi, the mother of Amenemhat IV, was actually the wife of Amenemhat III at all. And if she was, was Amenemhat III the actual father of Amenemhat IV? It's unclear. Therefore, if Amenemhat IV didn't have a, didn't really have any biological relation to Sobek Nefru, therefore he probably would have wanted to wipe out his his stepsister's line of descent out, and perhaps he he and the the court refused to let the two children of Sobek Nefru become pharaoh but they would become pharaoh shortly after her death. And in reality, the fact is, there isn't a true demarcation between the 12th and 13th dynasty. Ryholt suggests this is due to the rise of the Nile Delta Canaanite 14th dynasty, who could have been the ancestors of the 15th dynasty, but it's known that most of the pharaohs were Hyksos, with a couple of, but not too many, native Egyptian names interspersed between. And yes, I'm going to make a video about their family tree as well. So as we can see, Sobek Nefru ruled for three years and died around 1802 BC. She apparently had two children, Amenemhat Sanbef and Sobek Hotep. The founder of the 13th dynasty is actually even disputed by Egyptologists today. Several of them believe it to be Kuwatri, who will cover a little bit later. But several, but many Egyptologists nowadays who follow Kim Rihal state that Sobekotep I was the first pharaoh of the 13th dynasty. Which means he's in effect technically part of the 12th dynasty because there was no technical demarcation between the two, as with many Egyptian dynasties. If we counted only the biological, counted only biological descent, and not based on whether it's through the female or male line or not. For example, let's say a daughter of one dynasty marries a completely unrelated pharaoh and who founds a new dynasty. If we had that, I'd say we only we'd only have like, we'd have probably less than half the dynasties we do have today. Because many of them were biologically related. And this one is pretty surprising because they're the children of the last pharaoh. So technically, these first descendants can be considered both the 12th dynasty, but for this chronology, we part of the 13th dynasty. And as we can very well see, I marked out in red who the descendants of the 12th dynasty are, and they would approximate from 1803 to 1662 BC. And that's a long line of descent. However, there are some problems with the chronology, and also, if my hypotheses are incorrect, then obviously that end date is going to have to be shortened by probably over, by probably some 50 years. 
now. Sakemri Kutawi Amenemhat Sobekhotep the first ruled for three years, from 1803 to 1800 BC, and his reign saw the rise of the 14th Canaanite dynasty. And eventually, over uh, some some 60 years later, a pharaoh by the name of Shesi would rise to power. And he was probably a descendant of the first pharaoh of the 14th dynasty, who was 100% of Canaanite origin. Um, and as you can see here, I've marked out their position with letters B and A. So therefore, Sobekotep the first is the first pharaoh, and this is the second pharaoh. Just so you know, it's easier for me to tell where they're placed chronologically. Now, Sonbeth was succeeded by Narakari Sobek. Who could have been a child of the founder of the dynasty, Sobekotem the first, but we're not even sure because he ruled for a year, and therefore he was probably a usurper who murdered Sonbef, but was but was murdered by Amenemhat the fifth, who could have been anything from a son to Sonbef to a son of Sobekotem, or even being Sonbef himself, who could have been deposed by Narakari. But then, after a short time, he retook the throne. So there are these several theories here, but we're going to say one thing. Amenemhat V was definitely descended from the 12th dynasty. However, one thing is similar about these first four pharaohs. They're ruling for a very short time. There are several theories in which we can explain this first. None of these pharaohs were related, or at least, you know, most of them weren't related, and they were the, the eldest uh, men, basically old men or a little bit younger, were chosen from the most noble families and rotated uh, throughout, so that is why they ruled for a very short time. Now, I don't know about you, but this, this theory is interesting, but this family tree kind of doesn't agree with that. So therefore, my opinion is, is that there were several usurpers who overthrew the pharaoh and became pharaoh themselves. As we're going to see, there's going to be many usurpers coming down the road. Therefore, I think they these first pharaohs were all legitimate pharaohs, and the reason why they ruled for such a short time probably would have been a usurper. And if Sanbef really is Amenemhat V, then his reign can be extended to seven years. But again, why? W what happened? Okay, I don't have an explanation for why. You know, it was such short reign between all of them. Perhaps they could have all been in their thirties or forties, and perhaps they were usurped uh, not by their relative. Sad, but the court probably overthrew them because, for some reason or other, because they favored, you know, another person. So, with all these competing theories, though, let's put that aside for now. But again, there's another thing I have to talk about: the 14th Dynasty. Kim Ryholt states it began in 1805 BC. So therefore, it's going to be contemporary with Sobek Nefer. However, many Egyptologists reject this idea and state it began around the reign of Nehesi. Or perhaps a little bit earlier, circa 1705 or even 1730 BC. The waiting years of the 13th dynasty. Both of, both of these theories could be correct. In fact, we can even combine them. We could even make a sub-dynasty first five pharaohs of the 14th dynasty into somewhat of a proto-14th dynasty. And we 
could just say then the Hesse assumed power as the first pharaoh of a new dynasty because he had acquired much power from his father, Chesley. But again, the first five pharaohs of the 14th dynasty are disputed, you know, if they even ruled during that time. But enough about the 14th dynasty. Let's move on from Amenemhat the fifth, who again, who could have been Sanbev, who could have been the son of Sobekhote, and who could have been the son of Sanbev. We have no idea. It was not certain. So, therefore, Amenemhat V was succeeded by his son, Ameni Kemal. And the reason we assume he's a son is because of the relation, which, and many of these theories are rivals, but many of them are fine. And as you can see, Kema married Nafra, and they had Hatshepsut, and Hatshepsut was actually found at Gasher not too long ago, a couple of years ago. I'll put the link to that article in the description, but just so you know, when they say the king, it's referring to Amen and Kema, a descendant of the 12 times. His uh, successor was was his son, Utipibre Kama, Sehornid Sehornidje Heretep, or Sehetepibre, the first or second. I forgot to mention how long Yemeni Kama ruled, but he ruled for two years. To 1791 BC. And Amenemhat V, as we saw before, ruled for three years, and his son ruled for two years. And his son ruled for three years, or average. You know, he could have ruled more than that, he could have ruled less than that. But on average, he ruled for three years. Because the estimation of his rule is from one to five years. Now, again, as I said, I'm not exactly sure of the reason why they're ruling for such a short time when it's father to son succession. Maybe there's a reason for this, but the most likely reason is probably if someone from the 14th dynasty came and, you know, instigated the court to murder this person, and eventually, because maybe the court wanted the 12th dynasty's bloodline to die out. But, you know, thankfully enough, they never succeeded. As we'll soon see. He had a child, or at the very least, had descended in some way, or at the very least, was related to this person, Sahid to Pibray the second. But of course, he could have another relation which is more probable, as we're going to see. Kema, the second, if you want to call him that, was succeeded by his uncle or brother, Yufni, who ruled for a very short time. Perhaps he even co-ruled with his successor for a short time because he ruled for such a short time. And this I'm talking about is Amenemhat VI. Or in full, Ameni Antef Amenemhat VI. Ryholt proposes that this pharaoh was the son of Antef. And Antef was the son of Amenemhat V. Okay. So the relation is all through Amenemhat. And Antef, it's, it's very interesting because apparently then he's not, he was never pharaoh, at least according to our knowledge. So, Amenemhat the sixth was succeeded by another usurper who was probably prompted by the Egyptian court to usurp the throne and end 
the 12th Dynasty bloodline. Why? I don't know. Maybe they thought they were getting coming to incompetent. I have no idea. But in reality, it's probably most likely they were all, there was all, it was all murders rather than natural deaths. So, this usurper I'm talking about was Semenkari Nebnuni. And he ruled for two years to 1783 BC. Amenemhat the sixth ruled for three years, probably alongside his cousin, Yuf, or who, or who also could have been his uncle. 1788 BC, as you can see, right here, right there. And Simon Kar Nebnuni, we don't know much about, but he ruled for two years. And based on the fact that Nebnuni's predecessor we all know was Antep, Amenemhat the seventh, the sixth, and his successor, it's a Pibre the second, or relatives. I mean, see right here. He probably married a daughter of Amenem or a sister of Amenemhat the sixth. We're not sure, but this is this is probably a case of assassination slash usurpation. Nebnuni apparently didn't last long and was succeeded by San Antipibre. So, so was Katai. And as we've seen before, he could have been the son of San Antipibre the first. This, this guy. But he's more likely a son of this guy. So therefore, the line of Ameni Kemai could have easily died out. Or he could have been a son of both of them. Well, not of both of them, but he could have been descended from both of them. Or said to Pibre could have married a daughter of said to be the first. We really have no idea. So so therefore I'm assuming he was a son of Amenem the sixth, based on a by Ryle. He was succeeded by Sewich Kari the first. Not the first time you're gonna see this name. But strangely enough, the second Sewich Kari was after the third. I don't even know why they're named that way now. He ruled Sewich Kari the first for a very short time in 1781 C. And of course you can all see these rule dates. And of course you can see that I have not colored the usurpers. So which Kari was succeeded by Nejimibre, ruled for seven months in 1780 BC. As you can see here, Raiho's theory is that they were all these three pharaohs, Antipibre, Sewichkari, and Nejimibre, are all named Amenemhat, because they're lacking a nomen. So therefore, they could be the brothers or the father of Rensenem. However, before this happens, we're going to see Nejimibre succeeded by another usurper, Conkrey Sobekhotep II, or possibly even fourth. He was the son of Nen the Commoner. And the reason why I call him a commoner because that's exactly what Sobekhotep of the second would want. He, like Sobekhotep of the third, exalted the fact that he he was from a non-royal line, and he possibly married. He possibly married, as you can see from here, a sister of these three guys. He ruled for three years, or four years. And again, the reason I say he married a daughter of those guys, well, first of all, when you serve, you wanna have some sort of legitimacy to the previous family, right? So you're gonna marry somebody from that line. That's number one. But number two is that his predecessor and successor are related, okay? 
By the way, it's unclear, but they're unla- but they're related. Sure. He was succeeded by Renseneb Amenemhak, who possibly usurped the throne from the usurper and reestablished the 12th dynasty's descendants on the throne. He ruled only for four months, however, in 1777 BC. And he, again, he could have been the son of any one of these three Amenemhat pharaohs, or he could have been their brother, and therefore son of Amenemhat VI. But it's clear he had a relation to the 12th dynasty, that much is certain. He was usurped by a very interesting figure, Hor the First Awebri, or Hori the First Awebri. And if you notice here, there is a Hori the Second over there, and he's possibly descended from Sewage Kari the First. And Hor the First is also possibly his ancestor. We're going to get to that barrel a little bit later. In fact, a whole lot later. Hor the First Awebri founded the Horian sub dynasty. And it's possible that he didn't have any relation to his predecessors. In fact, if there is any, we can't find it. But his line, consisting of himself and his two sons, much like Vespasian and his two sons, Titus and Zimitian, were for seven years instead of the, the Flavian, instead of the Flavian, 27 years. So I guess Vespasian did a better job. But that's not the point. The point is, for the first that we break, we actually have this sarcophagus. It is very interesting. And he possibly had two children. Sikmerit Kutsawi Kaba, who for three years, and Digit Keperu, who were for two years, and succeeded their father. And Nub Hetsepti Kered, Kered means a child, by the way, was also possibly a daughter of Hori the Weeper. The reason I'm saying possibly is that none of this is actually is completely verified, but it's assumed for the most part to be correct. Now, Dijede Kiperu was succeeded by Amenem VII, who possibly was a descendant of the 12th dynasty. As you can see here, I didn't show anything about him, but that's not true, because I have. It's just to show his continuation, but he's over here, there. Amenem the seventh. Amenem the seventh's name is in full is Sajifkari K. Amenem the seventh for five years, which is pretty impressive for a 13th dynasty pharaoh. As we can see, he was the Q ruler of the dynasty. But I'm not sure what that means in numerical terms, you know. Amenemhat could have been a son of K, and we're not even sure when he ruled. And K could have been a son of Seb K. And Raiho has determined that Seb K, which is his full name, means Seb and his son K. And K had his son Amenem Seb. And he was possibly co ruled with Amenem the Seventh, the Seventh, or ruled before Amenem the Seventh. Therefore, he, he possibly ruled sometime after the fall of the. Korean dynasty, but it's not sure when. Seb and K, again, we have no idea when it, the exact time of their rule, 
but we do know about Alpha Man Mon. Seb could have been a grandson of Seb, and Seb, in turn, could have even been a son of Amon Amon the Sixth, who chose to overthrow the Orion dynasty and reestablish the descendants of the 12th dynasty as the dominant pharaoh, which they had been so far for a very long time. But three years is not a very long time. Or rather, 40 by the time of the death or you or exile or whatever of Amenemhat VII. After his usurpation in 1765 BC, he was succeeded by the supposed founder of the 13th dynasty, the one I wanted to talk about. And now, here we are. Utawi Wegaf or Ugaf. He ruled for an unknown amount of time after 1765 BC. And he was succeeded by the first Semitic pharaoh of Egypt, Usukari Kenjer. But perhaps not the first foreign one, if we count the 14th dynasty as existing during this time which is rejected by many Egyptologists, but I accept it because, or at least I accept a proto-14 dynasty for the first five pharaohs. Or either for the first six. Now, Kutari Wegaf was regarded as the founder of the 13th dynasty based on his name, Kutari. However, Raihold determined that this is a mistake and it actually meant Sobekotep I, which me, which reads as Kutawi, as we can see. So that's only a minor difference, but this could mean major differences in king lists, especially in terms of who founded the 13th dynasty. We don't want the 13th dynasty king list to be more convoluted than it actually is. Because in reality, a lot of these kings' positions, which I've talked about so far, are not entirely stable. However, as to the issue of who founded the 13th dynasty, I will go with the scholarly and Reiholtian, as I like to call it, consensus. And they consider that Sobekotep I Kutawi, who I discussed at the beginning of this video, to be the founder of the 13th dynasty and it makes sense considering that he is a son of Sobek Nefru and if Wegaf is the founder of the dynasty there is no genealogical continuity and also then why do we have you know other pharaohs that seem to be descended from Sobek Hotep the first or his brother it's a little bit strange so therefore, it makes the most sense that Sobek Hotep I is the founder of this dynasty. And also, it establishes a genealogical connection. Now we're going to get to Usukari Kenjer, who lived during 1765 BC, 40 years after the fall of the, the, the apparent fall of the 12th dynasty. But the 13th dynasty is in reality a continuation of the 12th. For the most part up until this point and the three usurpers we've seen two of them could have married in could have married a relative of the previous and succeeding king and the three others who didn't the Orion dynasty tried to destroy the line but Amon Emhat the seventh stopped this apparently if he is a descendant that's my own hypothesis now. Now we're getting to my hypothesis. And another one of my hypotheses is about Cor Cori the second being ascended was for the first and of Sewage Kari the first. There Kari Sobek again could have been a, a usurper, but he also could have been a relative of Sobek the first. Based on the fact his name is Sobek. But again, it's pretty silly, so he's more than likely a usurper. 
who probably ain't no one. Yeah. So therefore, the six usurpers we've seen, three of them are related in some way to the thirteen mainline thirteen dynasty, which we're call it for now on said descendants of twelfth dynasty. I'm gonna stick with the term mainline thirteen dynasty. And the other three, the Horians, had no relation whatsoever, and if they did, it's unclear which how they were related to their predecessors and successors. And Wegav is an interesting case because he's the first in the line of several usurpers. But will he be successful? And in reality, the 14th Dynasty is slowly gaining in power in Habaris. And the Canaanite population at this point definitely outnumbers the native Egyptian population, which is not a good sign. Now we're going to get to the reign of Usukari Kenjur, who probably murdered Wake Up, who himself probably murdered Amanemon the Seventh, and Amanemon the Seventh probably murdered the, the Jed Kiperu. Now let's get to Usukari Kenjur. I will provide a list of 13th Dynasty Kings in the description. So, Ursa Usukari Kenjur is possibly the first Semitic, but not necessarily the first foreign pharaoh of Egypt. Usukari Kenjur ruled for four or five years, starting around 1769 BC. You can see I colored him and another pharaoh yellow. This because that's supposed to be for the Semitic kings. Born from 1764 to around the 1750s BC. He married son of, son of Enos and had a son named Kedger. The reason we call him Semitic, even though he adopted the name Nematri, is because of Kenjur, which is not Egyptian. This is not an Egyptian name. And he was usurped by Spenkakari Emi Remy Shah. And we'll go over this relation later. Emi Remy Shah ruled for less than 10 years, starting 1759 BC. He usurped the throne from Kenjur and could have been his relative because both of them were apparently Semitic. However, Emi Remy Shah is also an Egyptian name, so we're not sure if he's Semitic, but it's assumed by some Egyptologists that he was a foreign or at least somewhat Semitic pharaoh as well. He was a, a, a presumably a popular general who either overthrew his predecessor by a military coup or a political coup. The point is, he overthrew his predecessor, Kendra. He possibly had ten sisters, although that uh, honor could also go to Incept the fourth. He also possibly could have had two children, but that honor could again go to Incept the fourth. And he could have had a wife named Haya, but that honor could have gone to Incept the fourth. And as you can see here, Queen Aya was related to Whiplath Thotep, who married Senapenas, who was the daughter of Anku, who married Meraret, and Anku was a powerful vizier, and his father, his father was named Zamont, and his mother was named Henny. His father, his father, Zemot was also a vizier and was the son of Zaltim. We don't know who she was, but she was the mother of Zemot. Zemot had another son, son of Tifi, who was the priest of Haman. Anku had a children, two children who were also viziers, Senep and Meru. But Bathotep was the son of Anumotep, who was a mayor, and it's in a Verut 
Behunet, Hunut, Henut. Knumotep, though, could have been possibly a descendant of Knumotep I, who was in Oryx Noma, who married the daughter of Amenemhat I, Satipi. If that's the case, it's a pretty interesting connection, because that connects them directly with, that connects these two guys with the 12th Dynasty directly. But again, it's only speculation here, based on the name. However, Aya could have been first been the wife of Emi Remisha, but then could have been forced to marry Intep the fourth, so therefore she could have been the wife of both, but the ten sisters and the two children could have belonged to either, but more than possibly the two children could have belonged to, uh, not two children, I say four children could have belonged to Emi Remisha. Yeah, three daughters and one son, Red Yenef, so possibly belonging to Emi Remisha. But the point is, Amy Remishaw was usurped by Sipkari Intep IV, who ruled less than 10 years, from circa 1759 to 1749 BC. He was usurped by Sipkari Bray, who ruled for around 5 years, ending circa 1744 BC. Again, this is what I call a usurper dynasty. We don't know anything about them other than the fact that the 14th dynasty slowly became more and more powerful and wrested more and more territory from the weakening 13th dynasty as the mainline 13th dynasty was nowhere in sight. I.e. the legitimate successors of Sobek and her descendants. The Seth Marie was usurped by Sobek Hotep III, who ruled from three to four years, circa 1740 BC. And I mentioned him before about he, like Sobek Hotep II, exalted the fact that his parents were commoners, and we even know what their names were Umu and Sibu and Menzu Hotep. However, he had a half brother because Umu and Sebi had married Dedu Sobek and had Renesena. He had several siblings, Seneb and Kaku. Seneb married Nebit and had several children, Anut, and Hotep, and Sebi, and Sobekhotep, who were the nephews and nieces of Sobekhotep III, which were three to four years. He had two wives named Seneb Penas and Neni. Which he had by Neni, he had Dena Tonkit and Huitsebi Fendi, who inscribed her name onto a cartouche, which is relatively unique. Now for this son, son of Henas and son of Henas, I know it's a very interesting correlation. The fact that their names are so similar is really weird. So I assumed they could have been relatives in some way, and they could have been related to Sen of Sen the wife of Necker Hotep I. If that's the case, this links one, two, three, four, five pharaohs together, and Seth Maria Reyes is some sad guy with no relations in terms of these pharaohs. But again, it's only speculation. So see your cousin's based on name or related, so I'm not sure. And now enough of these, you know, no-color usurpers, let's get back to the main line. And Sobek Hotep III was succeeded by possibly a relative named Neferhotep I, who began the powerful and relatively well attested, probably the best attested dynasty, sub dynasty, the Neferhotepians, which was from 1740 to 1712 BC. And I forgot to mention, up until the reign of Neferhotep I, From the time of the early pharaohs of the 13th dynasty, around the time of, I'd say, Emeni Kema, they are all contemporary with the famous Hammurabi, ruled from 1792 to 
to 17. Seventeen to circa seventeen fifty. See, so over forty years. But it's interesting how long he ruled and how short this these kings have been ruling and how many there have been so far. In fact, we're almost at the end of the alphabet here with the ex pharaoh dynasty. Consequently, the 24th pharaoh, presumably, if we don't count three, if we don't count seven, is on K. We have never hoed down the first. We rolled for all around 11 years and four, one, four months, 1740 to 1729 BC. Now, if you notice, I've colored red. Notice I've colored in red. And you might want to know why. You might want to know why. But you also might have already seen why this is the case. And if you have, well, you have a good eye. Because I explain it now. So, Eberhotep was the son of Kemi and Anka. Anka was apparently of non-royal origin. Son of Nehi and Semepipi. He apparently came from a non-royal family on his father's side. But on his mother's side, this is where it gets interesting. According to a DFA chart which Chris Bennett and Christian Setefani, who's a genealogist, and he also works for IT, he's an IT consultant, and he's a historian at the same time, and he's published many books in French about genealogy. He and Chris Bennett, who's a famous Egyptologist, always you know, somewhat famous, commented on a 4,000 year old descent from antiquity chart, which somebody who had no idea made, and it says that Kemi was a descendant in some way, perhaps through two generations, perhaps even through Sobek Hotep the first, from Sobek Nep, according to Chris Bennett and based on the West Coast virus. I'm not sure how that's possible because the West Coast virus was the old king of the tale. But I guess it has something to do with that. So, and you can see your blue sleep. So. I'm gonna have the third. Now, if this is correct, the Neferhotep re had reestablished the main line. Thanks. After a period of 25 years, that would be descended. From the main line, he reestablished this line and established the most powerful sub dynasty of the 13th dynasty. He married Senefsen, possibly was a relative of two other women who had very similar names, and who were wives of two pharaohs. Which again could connect them to other pharaohs, but that's not the point here. I just never discussed that. He had a child named Neferhotep, who might have died young. And his Neferhotep's brother, Sehathor, co ruled with him and ruled for less than a year, X months, and three days with Neferhotep I. Meaning, this was another Kong Regency, which had begun in the 12th Dynasty and continued possibly with Yufni and his successor, Amenemhat, and it possibly, Amenemhat the sixth, and it possibly continued with Seb K and Amenemhat the seventh. Although that is unclear. And 
Neferhotep the first was after 11 years of rule was succeeded by his was succeeded by his brother yeah I know it's pretty well one Sobek Hotep the fourth Sobek Hotep the fourth is the best attested ruler of this dynasty and ruled for around 10 years possibly to 1719 BC so therefore we can not absolutely but somewhat date him from around 1729 to 1719 BC so there's that either he or Sobekot of the third is positioned as the ruler uh, the ruler of this dynasty in the list of dynasties and the rulers which modern books choose to relate to either but him or Sobekot of the third well, we all know when Sobek III ruled, and now we know when Sobek IV all thanks to Kim Reinhold. Now, of course, this chronology follows Kim Reinhold, but then we're going to see the new arrangement and how strange it is. But at the same time, I'm not going to put the new arrangement for Sea Sparrows because it's going to mess up the whole thing. So therefore, I'm following Kim Reinhold. Sobek IV was one of the most powerful kings of the 13th dynasty. But we can say that the 14th dynasty officially took over possibly all of the Nile Delta. And all he had left was upper and middle Egypt. He married to John and the new Ketep, Ketep. But there is an interesting relation we haven't talked about. You see here, it's a big family tree. Apu married Sobek Hotep, who was a steward. They had two, two children, Nebunk and Dedu Sobek Bebi, who was a, basically like a deputy of the vizier. He married Dua de Nofret. And they had Sobek Imsup, who was the overseer of the granaries, and Nukais, with some children, from her royal husband, Fair. Khan. Khans who married I Wait, did I say two children? I meant one children. She had one child, Khans, married I, who was a vizier, or I. I think it's I. So, there's that. But it's also unclear who she married. She could have married Wahibre Yabao, Sobek Hotep V, or Sobek Hotep VI. It is unclear who she married, but it's any one of these, and possibly could be all of them. Although, let's suspect. However, the fact that we don't know any one of Sobek Hotep V's wives means that Nukais could be the wife of Sobek Hotep V, and also could have been the wife of Wahibre Yabao. Or, you know, we were just not sure at all. But Sobek Hotep IV, after a reign of around 10 years, was succeeded by who, someone who could have been his son, or at the very least claimed to be. But what we do know is that from his many, from his several children, which is around four, two of them were named Sobek Hotep. Therefore, these two pharaohs could very well be the children of Sobek Hotep. We're just not sure. He ruled for three years and died in 17, around 1716 BC and was succeeded by his presumed brother, who ruled for four years, eight months, and 29 days, 1712 or 1711 BC. And you might be wondering where we're getting all this information, and it's all from the Turin Canon, who gives the names and, and the year and the regional uh, years, or at least how long they ruled. But it's up to archaeologists and with the help of Mimitho to determine how long they actually ruled and who they actually were and what place they had in specific dynasty. The Guantani and all. The two wives, so the code of the, the sixth, had two wives, Ganob and Nubo Tepi. The reason why they're both labeled fifth and sixth is because Egyptologists aren't clear as to these two guys' placement, but I'm going to go with this. He's the fifth and 
he's the six. Because this is, we started at Z now, because Sobekot of the fourth is the first Z pharaoh, but Sobekot of the fifth is Z one. And then we're going to continue from there, Sobekot of the sixth is Z two. So they wrote in succession, and he's the fifth, and he's the sixth. And then, then this Neverhudebian dynasty finally ended. Well, not finally, that's a generation. 28 years, 29 years. Succeeded by Wahib Yabao, who according to the Cambridge Asian History, and according to William Hayes, who is a former, who's a, who was a former curator of the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and was and helped the Metropolitan Museum of Art practically his entire life, stated from one of his sources he had compiled that perhaps Ibao could be, Wahib Ibao can be identified with the Vizier Ibao, who lived around this time, and the fact that they have a very similar name is very weird. I'm going to assume they're the same person. Ibao lived for 10 years, 8 months, and 29 days to 1701 BC. If he was Ibao, his wife would be Ren Resonib. And he also could have had Nupakais. Possibly he could have taken that from either Sobekot of the fifth, Sobekot of the sixth, or someone else entirely, but it's more likely that so he took it from both these two, or perhaps he just married her. We're not even sure. His father, if he was a vow, would have been Sapka Bevi, the vizier. So, as always, there's a vizier dynasty. He had two children, son of Hanaf B and son of Hanaf A. Son of Hanaf B married Ibitzit, and son of Hanaf A married Sobekot, and had his their child. Well, we're going to talk about it later. And but son of Hanaf A comes from. And Ken Sifat, if he would, if he is a visionary about. Now, I believe that, and also Ren, Rasan, Ren, Rostam, has as her father, he had new information, and he's 13Z3. Which means he's probably the 29th pharaoh of the dynasty. And I have a theory that he could have been vizier, this is my theory, not anyone else's, he could have been vizier at the same time being pharaoh, in order to retain control of these two positions and become very powerful, which is probably why he reigned such a long time. The fact that he's he bow, the vizier of Bao is dated to the reign of I the First means that possibly I the First could have had part on him because he was such a good vizier, and even though he deposed him, possibly kept him as vizier. Although that's a little bit unlikely, it is my reasoning for what for uh, for that. Ibao could be the same person as Wahib Ray Ibao or Hibia. He was usurped by Renaferi I, who possibly could have not killed him but made him but kept him as a vizier. And he ruled for the longest time for this he ruled for a very long time in his dynasty. Twenty-three years, eight months, and eighteen days. 1701 to 1677 BC. But during his reign, the administration and in reality, the government and the whole of Egypt basically collapsed. So because of the first had been recognized as the first pharaoh, with the exception of the 14th dynasty. But now Egypt was getting a lot weaker. As the 14th dynasty came encroaching further and further, well, let's just say that with the, with the death of Sobekoto the sixth, the mainline dynasties have been basically practically wiped out. In the line of Sobek Nefru, dead. But that's not true. If Ibao was was actually Wahibri Ibao, he could have had it as, as a child, set of Hanaf A, as we can see here. Or set of Hanaf, this set of Hanaf could have been a child of one of the two set of Hanafs, A or B. Could have been the grandson of Hawaii Bray Bell. Or he could have been the son. We're not sure. But it doesn't really work. It doesn't really work 
chronology by so I'm gonna say it's probably the grandson of Abel. He married Sophie Cote, who could have been the daughter or the granddaughter of Sophie Cote before. It's more likely she was the granddaughter based on the chronology, but who knows? She could have she could have even been the daughter. They had as their daughter, Queen Mentehotep, who I wanted to talk about. Mentehotep married Sekemri, Sementawi, Jehetui, who for three years, circa 1650 BC. This is why it doesn't really work, because that's literally 69 years separating two generations. I'm not sure if that really works, but I guess you could say it works. But we're going to say either way, it doesn't matter. Nuentu who was descended from Ebal and so that could have been born. It doesn't matter how, it doesn't matter that she was. Jehetu was the son of the first pharaoh because he was the second pharaoh. The first pharaoh is named Lost, and he ruled a no one. So therefore Jehetu's father is named Lost. That's not really a name, but whatever. Now if the 13th dynasty was um simply moved from Memphis to Thebes, then we'll watch it. We're going to talk about it here later when I come to the end. But as you can see here, he produced his sixteen guns, which uh, and all the pharaohs have an uncertain relationship with each other. And they ruled around 1582 BC. And they were overthrown by the 17th dynasty, who could have had some relation or descent from them. And they ruled 250 BC. And their descendants were almost 100% the 18th dynasty. Who ruled for to 1292 BC and featured Tutankhamun. Now, as we, I the first had a wife named Amy, and we're going to talk about his children next. But remember, we're at 1677 BC. Now, surprisingly. Not much is known about I the First's reign, even though he ruled for such a long time. The son of I was Eni, probably named after his mother, Ineni. Eni ruled for two years, three to four months, and nine days, to 1675 BC, here. And he or his successor, Sewaj II moved the capital to Memphis from Amenemhat Egyptawi, or Amenemhat Caesar of the Two Lands, which is what Amenemhat I had named his capital, which he had founded. So, after any, a pharaoh by the name or king by the name of St. Henry Sewaj II, who for three years stood four months to 1672 C. Right here. And you might notice some interesting genealogical relations. Well, we're going to go over all of that right now. Any the first possibly had a sister named Redetenis, who married a vizier named Aya. See, see, see here. Aya had a son named Aya, which we call Aya Jr. And at another time, say, I had another son named Aya Meru, who is a vizier. Both of his sons were governors of El Kab. L1 and L2, as you can see. Aya Meru's son, Kepsi, is L3, or you know, whatever succession of governors there were, but I'm, I'm counting it from Aya Jr. Kepsi was a governor of El Cab. And Aymerio, Aymerio was governor approximately 1677 BC, and Aya Jr. was governor before 1677 BC. So I have exact dates. Kepsi was succeeded by his relative, Sobeknat. So Beknat married Nafu, who was a member of the elite. 
So Vecna purchased the governorship of El Cobb from his cousin, Kepsi. And all of these people we know from the juridical steel or juridical steely circa 1650 BC. So Becknut was succeeded as governor of El Cobb by his son Sobeknut II, who's very famous. And he rules up and he ruled during the 16th to 17th dynasty. And his father also ruled during the 16th dynasty. Sobeknath's own son, Sobeknath III, ruled in the 16th and 17th dynasty. You can probably see Okay. And he's the sixth governor of El Cobb. Well, again, we're dating it from Ayaz Jr., so could, there could have been more governors before Ayaz Jr. Just not sure they were. So, but not possibly could have had descendants, but they probably weren't governors of El Cobb. And if they were, we don't have any, we don't know who they were. So, but not had a brother named So, but not Hanuti and So, but not. Or so big, so big, knocked. As you can see, Red Atenis, one of the two wives of Sobek Nat II, was also a member of the elite. The other wife was uh, Inzi. Those are only the El Cobb relatives of the King Aya I through his daughter, if I may very well mention. The vizier Aya so, The vizier Aya was was descended from or at the very least was a daughter of Khans who was a daughter of Nucaius. I think we already talked about her. You might be wondering why I didn't tell her how people to talk about this in the previous in the previous part, or in the previous, you know, section, whatever. We'll talk about it now. Nupakais married either Sobekot V, 6th, or Wahibri Ibao. This is the least likely if we equate Wahibri Ibao with the vizier Ibao. Therefore, since Ibao already had a wife, which we know of, it's, we're not even sure if, I don't even think Wahibri Ibao is a likely candidate. It possibly could be Sobekot V, because we don't have any recorded wives or children for him, and the line only goes through Sobekota the sixth. I mean, no. We have recorded children and a wife for Sobekota the sixth. That's not the point. But if this is the case, then this relates the King Haya and Hini to the Neferhotepians, and therefore to Sobek Nef. And as we can literally see here, Sobekoto the fourth brother of Neferhotep, sent from Sobek Nefru, married Senebsen, as we discussed earlier. One of Senebsen's descendants is Neferhotep A. It's not sure if this child of Senebsen is also a child of Neferhotep. But he is certainly a child of Senebsen. That aside, his daughter was Hatshepsut B, who married Neferhotep B, who is the brother of Vizier Aya. I think that's really weird, or at least pretty cool, that the Neferhotepians relate to King Aya twice, and it's through his daughter's marriage. Nevertheless, these genealogical relations don't mean, do not mean that I am going to color any and I a red, because they're not actual descendants of Sobek Nefer. They didn't even marry a descendant of Sobek Nefer. Their relations married descendants of Sobek Nefer, for sure, but that doesn't mean they were actually descendants of Sobek Nefer. The point is, is that 
Let's get back to the gigs. Now that I went through all this interesting information, let's get back to Sir Watch 2. Sir Watch 2 was succeeded by Marissa Camry in Ed, who worked for three years and one to four months in one day. He could be equated with either Neferhotep II or any the second, who we're going to see here in a little bit. Ined ruled to 1669 BC and was succeeded by Sewage Kari II, Hori II, who ruled for five years to 1664 BC. He probably was among the last descendants of Sobek Nefer. I mean, in the 13th dynasty. <laughs> now, as you can see here, probably descended from Or the first. But Dodson, Dod, Dodson and Hilton suggest in their book on the great former families of ancient Egypt that Hor the first of Webre was the son of Renseneb Amenemhat. I don't think this is necessarily true, but it is an interesting theory, but I'm not going to put it here. I just wanted to mention it. Now, if he was descended from both of these guys, that would be pretty cool. And if Hor was descended, then he's a double descendant. But again, it's all based on Nomen was probably usurped by his cousin, who could have been a cousin, his cousin, we're not even sure about that. This is my hypothesis. Markawi Sobekhotep VII, who ruled for two years, around six months, suggested by Reihold, three to four days to 1662 BC. We don't even have the number of months, it's just a suggestion. He possibly was the last senator of the 12th dynasty, rule 13th dynasty. Or maybe this could be equated to Never hold up a second or somebody else important. I'm not even sure. I'm not even sure. The point is, is that I made him, I made the box big because it could be less than not sure. In terms of the 13th dynasty, he possibly could be sent from Soba Code of the sixth, two generations, and therefore could be descended. Could be descended from Nucaius, which would be pretty interesting because that would make him a generational contemporary of Hatshepsut B, Neferhotep B, and Vizier Haya, therefore placing him at the same time as any, the same generation as any the first. Again, that's all using math, but that's a, that's after also that's after some time. And that's literally after 11 years. So maybe he's an 11 years younger contemporary. The point is, it's based on mathematics. So, so because of the six was possibly a descendant of Kemi, and Kemi was possibly a descendant of Sobek Nefru, 12th dynasty. You can see here, cousin usurping cousin, possibly. Again, uh, so because of the seventh has another genealogical issue, Baby and Sobekote. Very interesting. We have actually two recorded children, but no wife. He was usurped by seven kings whose names are lost. And we don't know what their names are. They ruled around 1663 BC to, I have no idea. They could have been related by marriage or they could have just simply usurped the throne or they could have been related biologically. So, these seven kings were usurped by Mare Elips Ray, who could have been a separate king from Neferhotep. Could have been a separate king from Neferhotep the Seventh. I mean, Neferhotep the Second. A court or basically Reinhold states that they were the same king, which is very interesting. Specifically because of the fact that Neferhotep the Second has the name Mare Sekemre. You can see, I've separated the Sekemri, the Sekem, from the Ray and Mare, so you can see the similarities. They could be the same king, or they could be two different. I'm gonna go with the assumption that they're the same king. It could have been a three, third or fourth generation descendant of Neferhotep the first, based on his name, and therefore a cousin of these guys. Which means he would be a cousin 
by marriage of I the first. Neferhotep II was succeeded by two different people. What I mean by this, I mean new arrangement and rival arrangement. With this entire family tree, I've gone with the rival arrangement, but the new arrangement has switched several pharaohs up, and this is where it's most interesting how they're switched up. For example, in Reihold's arrangement, Merkut Perry immediately succeeds Neverhotep the second, second, or you know, Mary Lips Ray. The kings, or possibly the same. In the new arrangement, which believes that Mare, Ellipse, Ray, and Neverhotep II were completely different kings, states that Ibi, Ellipse, Matre was the immediate successor of Mare, Ellipse, Ray. is it's relatively confusing. And as you can see, this new arrangement is really weird. Because according to the new arrangement, Ini II was succeeded by Mosre and Mare Ellipse Ray. Or, you know, never hooked up the second. And I'm making this very confusing. So I'm just going to say, then the new arrangement, Never Hooked Up the Second, is separated from Mary Lips Ray, and therefore he succeeds Ini the Second, and he is succeeded by Ibi Matra. But Ini the Second also, is also succeeded by Ibi Lips Mosra. Or Akuna, whatever you want. But I'm gonna go with this less confusing arrangement. America Ferry reigned from Memphis with the power of the 14th Dynasty, controlling the Nile without Well, that's exactly what it sounds like. They were further in control than the Delta, and perhaps, perhaps bearing further relatives or descendants of the Ixos 15th dynasty to come and take over, or maybe they were military. I don't know. The point is that there's two different theories about when the 14th dynasty was founded, but we're going to go over that in the next video on the family trees of the second intermediate period. Because, you know, it's not that hard to construct a family tree painting in the dynasty. Because most of it is, most of it is, at least in some way, verified. But this is not really verified. So we have to go with a lot of assumptions if we even want to make some sort of dynasty. Never Odep II or Mary Lipsray, whatever you want to call him, or Mary Sikembray was succeeded by American Perry, who could have possibly been his son, based on the fact that both of them had been, had the arrangement in Mary Ellipse Ray, American Perry has the same thing. Mary Ellipse Ray. He wrote an unknown length, and he, and, uh, Mary Ellipse Ray also wrote an unknown narration from 1663 to 1649 BC. He was usurped by Mericare, who could have been his son, based on the fact, same arrangement. Mare Ellipse Ray. He wrote an unknown link. His son possibly could have been named Lost. Although I'm not even sure about that. Name Lost, who wrote an unknown link, was succeeded by Sewajkari Mentu Uta, the fifth or sixth. And it was contemporary with the last ruler of the 14th dynasty. Because he was one of the last rulers of the 13th. He could have been descended from Sewajkari the first because of his name is Sewajari, but there possibly could be a K missing, or he could actually be descended based on the fact that his name is Sewajari. I'm not even sure about that. That's why it says highly uncertain. Highly uncertain. That's why it says that. He ruled circa 1655 BC, and we have more genealogical information. Sitmut was his wife, and his son was Harun Harunet. Here with the, here's where the new arrangement comes in. He could have been usurped by any the second, who could have been usurped by Mary Lips, Ray, and Sewajari, 
Also was usurped by mm, Ellipse Mosra. Let's get to Any the Second Ellipse. Possibly a descendant of Any the First. Perhaps even his son, who knows, or his grandson. Any the Second wrote an unknown link and was succeeded by Neferhotep the Second. Possibly, if we say they're separate kings. If we don't, then Ini the Second have been succeeded by Elipse Mosra. The point is, I'm not even fully sure where his place in the dynasty comes in, but it's around it be, it's, it's around the Elipse Mosra. Elipse Mosra was succeeded by Ibi Elipse Matre, who was succeeded by Or Elipse Elipse Webenre. Who possibly could have had descendants in the 14th, 16th, and Abedos dynasties. But, it's a theory, based on the name. He possibly could have been descended from Hor the First, and if the, the hypothesis is right that Hor the First is the son of Horaseneb Amen Emhat, then he's descended, he's another of the last descendants of the 12th dynasty that ruled the 13th dynasty. Now, another king whose placement is highly uncertain is Sekanen, Sekanen Rey Ellipse or Lacuna Rey. He could have been the last king, or he could have been the 20 something king of the dynasty. But he was one of the last kings, that's a fact. His son could have been. Sekari based on the similarity of her name. For example, Sek and Seilipske. Okay, that's not really a similarity. Uh, the point is, is that it's a possibility, but it's a little bit unlikely. It's a little bit unlikely. But my theory is that the missing parts of the name of Sekari spelled Sewajkari. That's a relatively interesting theory I just composed. Well, if this is the case, then the number of pharaohs that are actually hypothetically or possibly likely descended from Sewichkare are a lot, a whole lot of them. <laughs> Apparently it seems like that in the 13th dynasty, at least. So Sekare possibly could have been another one of the last descendants, although the reason I didn't label any of these guys red, even though probably most of them some way are descendants of the previous 13th dynasty kings who were the sons of the 12th dynasty. The reason I didn't label them right like I did the other guys is because this is highly uncertain and probably not even right in some aspects. For example, you should probably just probably gonna, you know, disregard this family tree, but that's what I did. Sekare had two two daughters, Sit, Ellipse, and Minimiseus. He possibly also had a son in Sehakanre Sanktipatahi. He ruled one year unknown when. If this is true that his father was the of Sewage Car, then he was possibly the last Vesite, last ruler of the 13th dynasty that was ascended from. Another king is Elips Rey, who Biku could have usurped him and possibly could have been his brother or cousin or son, we're not even sure. He was usurped by Say Elips Ray. Could have been another son of Sekare, or a, a son of Sekanen Enre, or father of Sekanen Enre. He was the last ruler of the dynasty, and it's 1649 BC, when he was overthrown by the Ixos, and Memphis was taken, forcing the dynasty to move to Thebes, and therefore establish the 16th dynasty. Why skipping over three dynasties, you may ask? Here we go. 14th, Canaanite Nomaris, or Zobis, contemporary with the Mosef Nomaris, contemporary with the 13th, also overthrown by the Hyksos, possibly were their descendants or their relatives, because both of them were literally Canaanites, and established the 15th dynasty. The 16th dynasty could have been Hyksos, but it's highly unlikely and it's almost certain it's happened in a Theban one, or the first Theban dynasty. Several 
16th Dynasty Kings, could have also been kings of 13th Dynasty, but it's not really said by Egyptologists today that they were actually kings of 13th Dynasty. So, what should I say about this? Well, the Hyksos overthrew the 13th Dynasty, the weak, crumbling power of the 13th Dynasty ended. You know, it, it began with a, with a simple, with not even a transition. It, they were so that Kotev was part of the exact same dynasty, but it ended with a whimper. Perhaps it even began and ended with the same dynastic link. Perhaps most of these kings were descended from the 12th. Perhaps almost all of these kings were related to the 12th their marriage. Perhaps many of them were usurpers who intermarried into their line. And perhaps, 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 Manitho was wrong not to tell us about any of these kings. It would have been an interesting story to hear how these descendants of the 12th dynasty struggled on and eventually came to ruin and utter destruction. But not entirely, for they fled the Thebes, but were only made vassals of the Hyksos. And their descendants, the 17th dynasty, overthrew the Hyksos and the 16th dynasty, establishing the 18th dynasty under the guise of Athens. The dynasty of Amos was succeeded by the generalistic and famous 19th dynasty, which succeeded by their descendants, the 20th dynasty, succeeded by their descendants, the 21st dynasty. Contemporaneous with the descendants of the 20th dynasty, the 21st dynasty was the 22nd and 23rd dynasty, and their relatives were the 24th dynasty. And then there was the 25th dynasty, the Nubian one, succeeded by the native Egyptian 26th dynasty, Founded by Psantic, who could have been a descendant of the 24th and possibly then of the 20th and 19th. Psantic was over, Psantic's line was overthrown by the pharaohs, specifically Cambyses, the son of Cyrus, the great. The 20, the weak 28th, with one pharaoh, even weaker 29th with several more, and the last gasp, 30th, all fell around the reign of Philip Macedon. Which is really weird to think about. They were succeeded by the 31st dynasty, the second Persian century, who were succeeded by the Argaid 32nd dynasty, succeeded by the Ptolemaic 33rd dynasty, and succeeded finally by the Roman 34th dynasty. Lasting the longest of these Hellenistic Greco-Roman dynasties, they lasted a whole of almost 700 years before Egyptian, Ro Roman Egypt fell to the Arabs in the 7th century AD. Well, I don't think I'm going to say any more about the subject. Because I've spoiled too much already for future family trees. Actually, I've spoiled a lot for future family trees. The point is, is that this is only the first part in several videos that in which I will talk about the second intermediate period. I know I haven't talked about Egypt at all on this channel, but I will begin to do so and make actual videos. And it's not just going to be family trees, it's going to be videos. It's not just going to be family trees. But family trees, you know, they're going to be interesting to talk about, especially the 14th and 15th dynasties, and the 16th dynasty, the 17th dynasty. You know, I already covered the 13th dynasty. And remember, with I the first came the end of the glorious Middle Kingdom established my Mentuhotep II.
around 2040. The point is, is that this video is over, and there's a high chance that most of these pharaohs were descendants of the 12 guys. So, if you like this video, if you, if you learned something new, please like, subscribe, and share the video. I spent a long time making this family tree. So thank you, and see you on the next amazing historical video on the 14th Canaanite and enigmatic dynasty. The 14th. A brief montage of the 13th dynasty of Egypt. However, please remember to credit me for this family tree if you use it in any of your videos. I hope you enjoy this family tree. Sources as well as suggested reading can be found in the description. The next video I will make will be on the 14th dynasty of Egypt. However, Stay tuned for a video on the entirety of the Second Intermediate Period, broken into parts corresponding to the dynasties, and I will be referencing these family trees. Goodbye, please subscribe and share and like this video. Thank you all for watching such a very long video. Goodbye.